in the, in the speech. And um, that's it. And the name of the speech again is Moments of Truth for Toastmasters. Best luck, Paul. I'm going to give a speech about one of the most important things that Toastmasters International recommends to all clubs all over the world. And it's called, as the title of Charles read out, Moments of Truth. Now, what Toastmasters are moments of truth? Let me tell you a little bit about a guy called Jan Carlson, who was the chief executive of an airline company called Scandinavian Airlines System, popularly known as SAS, back in the 1980s. And the company was doing very badly. Its timekeeping was atrocious. Its customer service was nothing to write home about. And the company was about number nine out of 10 European airlines. So Jan Carlson came into the company and in a space of less than two years, SAS had gone from really low down to right up. And he did it by a big involvement of members of staff in the company, considering how the company could improve. But he did more than that. He changed the managerial culture of the organization to empower individuals close to the customers to change things without having to put proposals up the line all the way up to the board of directors and back down again. And he wrote a book in 1987 called Moments of Truth. And it's been a very influential book in two areas. One was in the area of managing organizations and bringing about change. And the second area that it's influential is in marketing. What on earth are moments of truth? Well, Jan Carlson's a great uh, quote from him saying, we have 50,000 moments of truth every day. Seems like an awful lot, doesn't it? 50,000 moments of truth. What he was thinking about and what he wrote about was the fact that the company interacted with a large number of customers every single day in a wide variety of ways, ever from the moment that this was before websites, ever from the moment that a customer got on the phone with the airline company, from the check-in desk, to getting on the plane, to traveling during the flight, to getting off the plane. All of these individual moments are moments at which the customer decides whether they ever want to come back to this company again. Isn't that right? At every single moment, a customer is deciding whether they're going to stay, whether they're going to buy again, what they're going to say to their friends, and what sort of attitude they're going to have. To come now, to Toastmasters International. And I'm going to go from Toastmasters International to Blarney Club. Toastmasters International produced a good number of years ago a booklet called Moments of Truth. 
in which it identified six particular parts of the experience of connecting with Toastmasters, which were would be our moments of truth. And you know what they are already. You probably don't know them by the, if you like, official names that you will find on the internet and you can that you can download. But it produced this book called Moments of Truth, and it also produced notes which somebody could use in a Toastmasters club if they wanted to involve all the members in the club in considering how could we get better. Now, Blarney Club has, for many years, way longer than the time I've been a member in the club, has strived very hard to get better and better. And I would like to think that you all have an interest in your club getting better than it is today. In Japanese language, there's a word called Kaizen, and it means continuous improvement. It's a very important term in the development of ideas about what you would do in a business. Kaizen, continuous improvement. How would you get people to not be satisfied with the status quo, not be satisfied and resting on their laurels, not be satisfied that there was nothing that could be better than what exists now? You know already what the first moment of truth for Toastmasters is, don't you? You've experienced it. Do you remember the first time you ever made connection with Toastmasters? The first time you spoke to a Toastmaster, the first time you walked into a meeting, do you remember your first impressions? Well, I tell you, they must have been good. If they were bad first impressions, you wouldn't have stayed, would you? They were certainly impressions that gave you confidence that it was worthwhile joining the organization. So the first moment of truth in Toastmasters is all about first impressions. And the ethos of moments of truth, events, we'll call them, within a club meeting. The ethos is, let's take a look at the first impressions people are getting of our club, and let's see if we can make them even better. Little example would be, this evening, when you arrived, at this online meeting, could your experience have been better? Could the way in which you were greeted have been better? Could it have been easier for you to find your way to the meeting? All of those are the sort of things that we look at in Toastmasters when we hold a Moments of Truth session. There are six of them, and I'll just quickly mention them to you, but I would recommend that you put into Google Toastmasters Moments of Truth, and you will find it nicely organized into the very first impression you get, first impressions. The next is the process by which you learn about the Toastmasters education program the policies of the organization, and particularly the responsibilities that the club has to you as a member. And on the other side of it, what responsibility 
Postmasters wants you to feel as a member of the club. Do you remember the Toastmasters promise? Do you remember that the very first thing in the Toastmasters promise is, I promise that I will attend club meetings. So you promise to attend. I think that the last word is frequently or on a reliable basis, but the first thing is to come to the meetings. So that's about responsibilities. The next one is how friendly you are. How friendly is the club? We get a chance in a Moments of Truth session to look at how friendly are we? How, what great a variety are we giving people so they don't get bored? And what's the internal communications in the club like? And how could it be improved? Program planning is the fourth one. That's what Lillian does. She produces agendas. How good are the agendas that the club is producing? How far enough in advance are they produced? Can we do something to improve the planning of the whole year? The fifth one is the membership and how strong is it? How many members do we have? How can we gain more members? Do we have enough members? Do we have too many? Do we have too few? And the last one is all about recognizing achievements that people do. And you might remember me saying at the beginning of the meeting that Charles Malone is the person in the club who has achieved most education awards. That is a way, a small little way of recognizing Charles's achievements, isn't it? It's a form of public recognition of achievements. And every level within the education program that you achieve is there to be recognized and appreciated. Every time you enter a speech contest and go in for it and do your best, that's another achievement by you. Every time you invite and bring a visitor to one of our meetings, that's another achievement by you that deserves recognition. So to, in conclusion, I wanted to introduce to you the concept of moments of truth and how it works, particularly in Toastmasters, but putting it in the context of good management and leadership practice in other places. Because learning about moments of truth within Toastmasters will help you, perhaps in relation to your own career. Those of you who are in organizations and you're in a situation where you may want to improve things can use the notion of moments of truth. And we're going to conduct a moments of truth session at one of our very next meetings. And I hope that when we do, you will bring to the meeting all of your best ideas about how we can do things better. Back to you, Toastmasters.